Hey guys, welcome to Education Day, all right? Or Exercise Education Day. All right, I guess I could brand it and put the logo, so whatever. Anyways, what we're gonna do, we're talking about recovery periods, okay? Recovery periods or intervals or intervals. Sweet, so recovery periods and intervals, what does that mean, okay? Now, to kind of break this down, I've gotta talk about energy systems, right? You know, green energy is a big topic nowadays. I'm just kidding. I mean, it is, but let's get into energy systems within our body, okay? So we have three different energy systems. We have ATP, PC, or depending on the academia you learn from, they might call it CP, right? It's just a passing on of those things, whatever. Boom, okay, then we have glycolysis. Maybe I should have lowered that, glycolysis. Let me lower that, let's, let's just pretend it's here. Feel me? All right, then we got over here, we got Krebs, okay? Krebs cycle, right? So, let's use red. ATP PC is like the initial part of a lift, all right? Say it's about five to 10 seconds of the lift, okay? The longer the lift gets, say it's, let's say what's, I don't know, say 20 seconds, so I think it's, I think it's around 60 seconds for this one. And this one is a minute, 60 seconds or up, okay? These are three different energy systems that we use, okay? Now let me talk to you about which, uh, how do I simplify this? This is more like, you know, creatine and ATP, which ATP? This uses more carbs, or if you look at it technically, they go CHO, right, it's fancy. Um, and then we have fats, okay? So depending on the type of activity you're doing, you're gonna burn one more than another, okay? Neither of these systems ever shut off, okay? If we shut one off, it's not good. And I guess you could go into the whole green energy deal and talk about coal and stuff, but I'm not gonna do that, all right? So anyways, we never shut off any of these. The rest periods or intervals that we take are gonna dictate which energy system we're gonna rely on more, right? Like, for example, the fat burning zone, right? Fat burning zone, that's a big one. You go in cardio machines or treadmills, Got the infamous fat, ooh, that's not a B, burning zone, right? You need your heart rate at this for this amount of time and so forth. It's like, no, don't do that to me. Don't say that, right? Because that's not how science works, right? That's not science. So essentially breaking this down, if for example, I'm gonna go do sprints, I'm probably gonna be more on this side of the spectrum, burning more of this stuff this way, okay? Creatine's gonna kick off for your initial sprint, more carbs, if the recovery period is gonna be longer, so typically to maintain power or sprints. Like one thing I've heard from an athlete is that they're like, I can't sustain my sprints for a long period of time because coach is having me, you know, do a sprint, do a sprint, do a sprint. Well, basic math, should I put basic math? No, it's, I don't know, basic math. No, I'm just kidding, I wrote it. Recovery, yeah, math recovery, recovery math, right? Is you wanna go one to 10, I like to go 20, when it comes to recovery. So this is work. So this would be the sprint to recovery. So basic rule of thumb, if I go down, if it takes me five seconds to do a sprint, I wanna at least rest for 50 seconds. I would shoot more for the 100 second range. And what that does is it helps replenish your ATP PC to make sure you're still powerful. Now, another thing that's a big part of that too is it will help you maintain your form and running. Because we all know, when we get tired, our form and running is not good right? It's just not good. So if your goal is to make sure that you're running effectively with good sprint times, good form, you want to make sure you recover with adequate amount of time. Now, if you're doing, uh, should I say CrossFit? Let's say CrossFit, right? CrossFit's really good at living in this zone, okay? They may dabble here a little bit, may dabble here a little bit, yeah, a little bit, right? That's why they eat a lot of fat, right? What's that called? Not keto, paleo, right? Cavemen. Um, and I won't get into caveman and paleo and stuff like that. So anyways, they're gonna be more carbs because their rest periods are not as, as they're not in this ratio. So if they don't rest or recover enough, their body is being trained to burn more of this stuff here, okay? Straight up, so their workout's gonna burn more carbs. Okay, now if you take a distance runner, let's say, I don't know, triathlon, no, I'm trying to, uh, I don't wanna go ultra marathon. How about a marathoner? Marathoner, marathoner. Hopefully I spell that right, let's put a spell check just in case, right? Gotta cover my bases, All right? So anyways, so, so we got spell check for marathoner. Marathoners, they're gonna run distance. So they're still gonna go through this when they start out 
and then get to carbs and they're gonna start burning more fats throughout their workout, okay? They're gonna be burning more fat. So depending on the activity that you do, or say you're passionate about, say you're, you were a sprinter, and now you wanna become a marathoner, okay? It's gonna take time to change your physiology to be able to be good at this. Now I can get into genetics and phenotypes and talk about those different types of things and how it impacts it, but I don't wanna get into that, right? So that's something we can, you, you can do your you know, 23andMe test. There's other tests you can do to figure out what types of muscle fiber you have and what type of cardio you can do. If you're interested in that, let me know. I'd love to talk to you about that. Um, so all these systems are gonna be working at a time, okay? So say for example, we've got 100%, ah, oh, it's a lot of writing on here. That's okay. Say it's 100% capacity, okay? And depending on your rest periods, what you're doing, say you're using 5% here, okay? 45% here, and 55, wait, 50, 50% here. So it may be that I'm doing more cardio, okay? Or needing Krebs. It might shift to more of like a 60, 35, five, right? Or if I'm doing sprints, it might turn into a 50, uh, let's not say that, it's probably 45. 45%, this would be, let's say a 50%, and say this one's 5%. So all those things can change and vary. It just depends on the activity you do. So when it comes to recovery and rest periods, that's something you should focus on when it comes to, okay, this is what I wanna focus on. So if your sport is sprinting or I'm stealing bases, you may wanna make sure you're recovering within this time period. If you're working doing, doing more distance running, you don't need as much re recovery period because you wanna be going here. Now, I guess I can divulge into this. I'm gonna race this and give you guys a new graph. Now, one question I had too from somebody was that they were curious about what burns more calories or what burns more fat when I'm doing activity. Right, that's a great question because everybody's so caught up on fat, right? Um, which is fine, which is totally fine, okay? So recovery, okay, fat. Say for example, I'm gonna give you, this is general statistics, but this is based off actual percentages. So say I'm doing sprints over here, okay? And over here, I'm doing, you know, fat burning zone, which is like, you know, distance or whatever it is, okay? Because I want to burn fat, I gotta, you know, punish myself and run a whole lot, right? Which is cool, right? No, don't punish yourself, be nice to yourself. So say for example, we just take the carbs and fats, okay? So carbs versus fats. Carbs, you're gonna probably burn, let's just say 60% with the sprints and 40% with the fats, okay? Now let's say with fats, I mean, I think with the research it showed that essentially with carbs, it's burning like 30% if you do distance and then fats was like 70, oh geez, 70%. So say for example, I do sprints for 10 minutes to burn 100 calories, okay? Which is up there, I get that, I'm just gonna use this number. But then over here, okay, this is just for, to make the point, I'm doing distance running for 30 minutes to burn 100, let's kill cows, let me do it that way, kill cows. Kilocalories, okay? So if I'm doing that, let's do the math on that. All right, so let's use this color. I'm now burning 60 kilocalories in carbs and 40 kilocalories in fat in 10 minutes, okay? If I go over here, I'm burning 30 calories of carbs and 70 calories of fats. And you might be like, oh my gosh, I burn more fat doing distance running than I did sprints. Well, say for example, you just double your sprint time, right? Uh, multiply by two. This all doubles, so now you've got 120 kilocalories of carbs, and I have 80 calories when it comes to fats. But you're you're still under time. You're not doing 30 minutes. You're doing 20 minutes, right? So 20 minutes, and you're burning more fat than kilocalories. The cool thing about that is we're not putting as much, in my opinion, what I've seen, wear and tear on the body doing distance as we are doing sprints. It's a little bit more velocity, but it's preparing your body to get to bigger extreme ranges of motion. Because when you jog, right, don't mind my jogging, I'm not really a jogger. So if I'm jogging, it's like, okay, cool, cool, cool. But if I sprint, okay, I'm getting more range of motion, which then tells me, sorry if you didn't pan to me too fast, right? No, I'm just kidding. Um, if I'm doing sprints, I'm working bigger extreme range of motions, which can actually help with your mobility and stability. So there's a couple fronts why sprints can be better than doing distance, okay? So let me just leave you with this analogy. Recovery periods are crucial, okay? They're crucial. Depending on what you wanna work, that's up to you, it's your, it's your decision. 
Let me do this analogy. When I buy a brand new car, my goal isn't to put as many miles as I can on it in a year. That's not, that's not my goal, okay? That's more, in my opinion, this guy, okay? Which means you're gonna be doing more work, more wear and tear on the body for distance. Now, don't get me wrong. Doing distance is good every once in a while. Totally fine. But I recommend doing this to help with range of motion, the effectiveness of your time, and along with that too, you're gonna to get more demand onto your system, which helps with HRV. If you remember what HRV is, go back, look through the videos, HRV and that kind of stuff. So that was a couple different things. So recovery periods and intervals and what you wanna work. And then we got an energy systems and what's more effective at burning fat. So hopefully that makes sense, guys. If you got more questions, let me know. We'll see you guys soon.